So firstly, we should remind ourselves with regards to al-ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, every action and every obedience, it is based upon that pillar of sincerity, along with the pillar of following the sunnah. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاء That they were not commanded except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مُخْلِسِينَ Sincerely for him, sincerely upon Tawheed. So we should recollect and we should remind ourselves that our attendance here, whether it is in person or it is via the technological means, that it is for the purpose of gaining knowledge, sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the purpose of removing ignorance from ourselves, for the purpose of removing ignorance from our friends and our families. This is the purpose of our attendance, sincerity to Allah, not for the purpose of others seeing us, or for the purpose of then speaking about it afterwards, that I attended and such and such attended with me and we stayed. It is not for the purpose of this. Rather, it is to sincerely attend and to benefit, to seek that knowledge for the sake of Allah. The seeking of knowledge in of itself is of great importance. The seeking of knowledge in of itself is of great importance. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, that those who truly fear Allah, they are the ones who are upon knowledge. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء That the ones who truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His servants are the scholars, the people of knowledge. That is due to their additional knowledge with regards to their Creator, their additional knowledge with regards to this religion, the revelation of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So it is upon a person to make his intention sincere, to seek that knowledge for the sake of Allah. As the scholars, they used to mention, that when the people, they attend the gatherings of knowledge, there are two types of people. Two types of people, they come and attend the circles, the gatherings, the conferences. One of those types is the guest, and the other type is the student. The guest, because when a guest comes to your home, you do not expect him to tire himself out. You do not expect him to exert his efforts. You expect him to sit there and to relax. That is the role of the guest. You are the host who will host him. He will relax. The second type here is the student. The student is the one who comes not to relax like a guest, but he comes with that intention to strive, to strive and to work hard and to make the notes. That is the difference between the two types of attendees. So the scholars, they used to say, when you attend the gatherings, don't come as a guest. Don't come as a guest to come and relax and expect everybody to provide you with what you require. Rather, you come as a student. You come to the gatherings of knowledge as a student. You come prepared with your pens and your books, and you come prepared with your energy and your mind and your focus and your concentration. So often, the people, they will come and they will attend, and they are sitting there without any attention and focus. That is not the purpose of the attendance. So we should remind ourselves of these affairs because no doubt it is of importance, the sincerity to Allah and the seeking of this knowledge. The seeking of this knowledge, the knowledge which is so honorable that even the people who do not have it, they want to ascribe to it as some of the Salaf used to say. That even somebody who doesn't have knowledge, he wants to ascribe himself to knowledge. He wants to be recognized and associated to knowledge, even if he hasn't got it. And the one who hasn't got it, he does not want to be ascribed to not having it. Nobody wants to be ascribed to ignorance. 
Everybody wants to ascribe themselves to knowledge, even if they don't have it. And in this time of ours, this time of ours with the social networking, then everybody ascribes themselves to knowledge with a few clicks. Everybody is posting on their Twitter accounts all types of ahadith, all types of narrations, cut and paste from here and from there, whether you yourself understand them or not. You are ascribing yourself to knowledge, posting to the people knowledge. And this is not the way of a student of knowledge. The student is the one who gains the knowledge, understands the principles. Not the ones now who come on the social networking, posting clips here, posting tweets there, and they don't have any knowledge in reality. They don't have any principles in reality. So this is a fitna which has come about for the people. A trial which has come upon the people. Where everybody now has the platform to present themselves as a sheikh. Everyone has the platform to present themselves as somebody who is ascribed and associated to knowledge. And that's why as we mentioned the salaf, they used to say that even those who don't actually have knowledge, they wish and they desire to ascribe themselves to knowledge. So the one who sincerely wishes to gain this knowledge, the one who sincerely strives, the one who does that with the pure intention, that is the one who genuinely benefits. It says a lot of youth who have studied a bit, perhaps a year or two, have become trialed with pride and amazement with themselves. What is your advice? I think a similar question was put yesterday, and Abu Hakim mentioned some of the points regarding it. This is in reality a disease which occurs to many people. And mostly, you see it with the YouTube generation nowadays, with all of their videos, all of their self-made videos, which they then upload and title it themselves, for themselves, Sheikh such and such, and Allama such and such. They are titling it themselves, for themselves. And they have all of these social media accounts everywhere, promoting themselves, putting up channels where they are giving fatawa, calling them fatawa shari'iya. And they are kids, barely having studied anything. The more a person studies, the more humble a person is supposed to become. The more a person studies, the more modest a person is supposed to become. The more a person studies, the more you realize how little you know. Here we have some narrations very suitable to this type of thing. Sufyan ibn Uyayna mentioned that the most knowledgeable of the people i.e. the people who are most capable of speaking about the religion are the quietest in doing so. And the most ignorant of the people in giving fatawa, in talking about the religion, in putting themselves out there as a sheikh, are the ones who are in reality most incapable of doing so. Malik ibn Anas said, I didn't give fatawa. Speak about religious verdicts until 70 scholars testified for me. Most of these people on YouTube, they don't even have seven scholars, let alone 70. And even those seven have huge question marks on them. You have the statement of some of the other salaf, they used to say, whoever loves to be asked, then it's a sign he is in reality not capable of being asked. In the narration also of Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla, he said, I came across 120 of the Ansar from the companions of the Prophet. ﷺ. Not a single one of them mentioned a hadith when a need arose, except that he desired his brother would suffice him. And neither would any of them be asked for a fatwa except that he desired his brother would suffice him in answering. In another one of the narrations, one of them would be asked from the Salaf. The Salaf would be asked a question. He would pass it on to his brother. He would pass it on to his brother. Nobody wants to be the one putting themselves forward answering. They would pass it the Salaf one to the next until it came back to the first person again. Because none of them wanted to put themselves forward into the limelight. I am the one, come to me, I will answer for you. Until eventually that question would come back to the first one. 
Ash-Sha'bi and Ibn Sirin mentioned about Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that when Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to narrate from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to quote a hadith, his face would change in complexion, like trembling and a change of color from the fear of saying something that may be slightly incorrect, from the fear of narrating something that wasn't exactly how the Prophet sallallahu said it. Such was that fear. Such was the need to be precise. These people on YouTube now talking about issues of aqidah, talking about issues that are above them and in reality above them and their ustad and their ustad. All of them stood on top of each other. It would be above them. <laughs> Yet they come and they want to talk about these fine details of aqidah. And we all know these types of people on YouTube. It's not hidden from anybody now. The ones who call themselves Abu Taymiyyah, the ones who call themselves Abdurrahman Hassan, and all of the others in that group, Da'wam and whoever else they may be. Have any of them got knowledge? Have any of them got ability to say that I have studied for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? All of them, the Ustad and the student and his student, three generations already, mashaAllah. Abdurrahman Hassan, Abu Taymiyyah, he has students already. Three generations and not one of them is, has hit the age of 30 perhaps. This is their knowledge. These are their scholars because they promote themselves. Where are they from these narrations of the Salaf? Al-Bara radiallahu anhu said, I saw 300 from the people of Badr. From those companions, from the people of Badr, there was not a single one of them except that he loved his brother would suffice him in answering the questions of the people. From the Muslims of Badr, the companions of Badr, the early ones. He said, no, they would rather prefer somebody else answers for them. They don't want to be the one. And you have that famous narration of Imam Malik. When the man went to him from a long distance to ask him. And when the Imam Malik didn't know, he said, I don't know. In one of the narrations, the man said to him, you don't know. My people sent me from such a far distance. My riding animal, look at the state of it. From all of that distance I came, and you're telling me I don't know to these questions? Al Imam Malik said to him, Get back onto your riding animal, go back to your people, tell them, I went, I asked Imam Malik. He said, I don't know. This is the way of the Salaf in that humility in knowledge. But now the people, they study for a week or two weeks, a month or two months. And they come back and they make their YouTube accounts and name themselves as Sheikh such and such, name themselves as a student of knowledge of such and such. And in reality, it's a calamity. These people don't have knowledge. They don't have knowledge. They've never studied and learned the principles properly. They don't know the reality of Salafiyyah. So you see the types of calamities they get involved in. All of these kids, the YouTube kids, Abu Taymi, Abdurrahman, Hassan, Da'aman, None of them have knowledge to give you. And you've seen that from their behavior and the types of things they've got involved in. Abdurrahman Hassan, MashaAllah, is going to defend the sunnah. And he gets beaten up by some takfiris just a year or so ago. <laughs> then he wants to come back and redeem himself. He needs to bring himself back up now. So then now we'll debate a Sufi, an easy one. <laughs> debate a Sufi, get ourselves back onto the platform. I won that debate. Abu Taymiyyah, these kids, what do they know? Barely out of their teens, barely studied anything. Not a single one of these narrations applicable to them because they love to be asked. YouTube channels answering the questions of the people. Who are they to answer? What have they studied? So be aware of this type of disease that goes around amongst the people. A person studies a year, two years, barely three years, four years. Three years, four years is nothing. Years and years sitting with the scholars, you learn the principles, the usul, and become grounded. As for these people, they are playing, playing with the religion. So warn the people, warn your friends and families from going to these players. All they are doing is playing around for their numbers and their ratings and they do not have knowledge of the religion. Now, I doubt, I'll tell you honestly as a final point, when this issue occurred recently in our brother Abu Iyab, Hafizahullah highlighted very clearly those issues in aqidah of this so-called student of uh, Abu Taymiyyah. I doubt... That Abu Taymiyyah, when he replied, even understood that response properly. <laughs> I doubt he even understands those issues of aqidah properly. 
Personally, I doubt it. Because they have not studied. When have they studied? And they make lists of these books that I have taught and I'm teaching this one, I'm teaching that one. And the reality is they know nothing. So be warned from this type of arrogance these new people have coming along, having studied nothing, promoting themselves as mashayikh. Be warned from that and go to the firmly grounded scholars and their students that are known. Jazakallah khair. There's a nice quote here from Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, from al-Fawaid, which is relevant to what our brothers have mentioned. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, Min alamat al-sa'ada wal-falah, anna al-abd kullama zida fi ilmihi, zida fi tawadu'ihi wa rahmatihi. That from the signs of happiness and success of a worship of Allah, of a slave of Allah, is that every time he increases in knowledge, he increases in humility and mercy. So it shouldn't be the other way around. The more knowledge you get, the more arrogant you get. That is a sign where knowledge is not beneficial, where the person is arrogant, easily setting up YouTube videos, ask the sheikh, fatwa, Mr. Fatwa or Mr. So-and-so who's given fatwa. And every time Ibn al-Qayyim said, the person increases in action, then that should only bring about more fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more cautiousness in falling to that which Allah uh, uh, is not pleased with or is displeased with. And every time he gets older or as the years go by, then that will only make him less concerned with this life, less seeking this dunya. And every time the person increases in his wealth, then the sign of happiness and the sign of salvation and success for that individual is that he increases in giving it to others, those who are in need. And every time the person increases in having more ability and status, then he should increase. And that is a sign. He should increase in helping the people. And also having hum- uh, humility towards them and in aiding them. That's in Al-Fawaid. <coughs> and Abu Darda, radiyallahu anhu, he said, Alamatul Jahal Talatha. The signs of ignorance is three. The signs of ignorance uh, is three. Number one is Al Ujub, being amazed with oneself. Being amazed with oneself, over praising yourself and thinking you have it. The Salaf were not like that. The Sahaba rather, used to fear hypocrisy upon themselves. Ibn Abi Mulaika from the Tabi'een. He said, I met 30 of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, and each one fed hypocrisy from themselves, a narration in Bukhari. They fed nifaq for themselves. They didn't uh, have ujub. And Shaykh Muhammad bin Hadi, he mentioned that this is a sign for deviation, that the person, instead of referring back to Ahlul Ilm, they start opening the doors to innovation by relying upon themselves. And isn't this what these youths have done? Debating with Ahl al-Bida' and then quoting from Ibn Abd al-Bar, from Tabmeed of Ibn Abd al-Bar, or from his other works about debating and de- why, why are you mixing Ramadan with Shaban? Why are you mixing Ramadan with Shaban? When Shaban comes, do you fast like you fast an obligatory fast like Ramadan? When Shaban comes, do you go and look for Laylat al-Qadr? Why are you mixing Ramadan with Shaban? Enjoying in joining good and forbidding the evil and inviting others to the deen and it fability and ahsan wajadil humility ahsan in these matters this is nothing to do with you opening the floor for al bid'ah to spread their bid'ah and you trying to defend it and in many cases not able to and then that bid'ah still remains for the people to listen to. Name me one of the sahaba radiallahu anhum 
all the tabi'een, all the tabi tabi'een, where they allowed debate in this particular manner, where they gather the awam, they gather the masses, and they say to them, come. As Shaykh Rabbi Hafudullah explained, we mentioned to him what these individuals are doing. He refuted what they are doing. And he said, Shaykh Rabbi Hafudullah said, Ibn Abbas anhuma, did not call the general masses to listen. Uh, did not say from his city, from his town. When Ibn Abbas went to the Khawarij, when he went to them, did he bring with him a multitude of people to go out with him to listen to this debate? No. He went out to them and he answered their questions and many of them turned back. This is what Ibn Abbas did. So why are you mixing Ramadan with Sha'ban? And what you have done, as Shaykh Abdurrahman Muhyiddin has mentioned, you have allowed bid'ah to be, to be opened and to be spread. Because now people are going to listen. They may listen to you and just look at your eloquence and how you speak, rather than the issues at hand. It may even be above their level. People may even live halfway through the debate. And they have only listened to the mubtadi'. And at your expense is their misguidance. And whoever misguides others, you will have the sin of, of all those that follow them, follow them upon their misguidance. You have called the people to that. Open the door for deviation. Ahlul Sunnah, don't do that. We don't have time to debate. Either you get up or I get up, the Salaf used to say. When they would say to the Salaf, As-Salih, some of them when they said to them, I'll just read to you a verse, they would reply, not even half a verse. Because I don't want to be twisted in your understanding. The Salaf never were like that. So Al-Ujub, these individuals have Ujub, and it's apparent from their actions. And it's apparent from their opening the doors to Bid'ah by having platforms of debates opening the doors to takfir and its doubts and then praising them in, on stage praising them on stage oh I can learn from you and this is my pen ready to write a fawaid fawaid from who? from a takfiri fawaid from who? the one who calls for the destruction of Makkah or the destruction of uh, 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 the Muslims and calls the Muslim rulers all of them kuffar without establishing the hijjah upon them Fawaid from who? Ya, ya Rajul. Arif nafsak. Know yourself. And know your level. The ulama, don't open this door. Did you see Sheikh Salih Fawzan do that? Did you see Sheikh Rabi Hawza do that? Did you see Sheikh Al-Haydan do that? No, you didn't. So establish the haq by following the methodology of the salaf. And don't be amazed with yourself. Number one is Al-Ujub. Number two, Kathat Al-Nutq. Speaking about, speaking much about that which doesn't concern you. Entering the affairs, entering the arena, you're not even ready for it. Who gave you that platform? Who gave you that, 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 that allowance to do that from Ahl al-Ilm? And even if anyone was mistaken in, in, in saying that, then we don't follow them in that mistake. This is not from the deen. Opening the doors to listen to shirk and bid'ah being spread, doubts. A'udhu billah. And thirdly, an yinha an shay'an wa Sign of ignorance that you forbid something and you yourself do it yourself. Nas'al Allah salama. Nas'al Allah salama. Nas'al Allah salama. Nas'al Allah salama.